Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, uh, episode 448. Uh, each uh, Thursday we uh, meet here uh, to review the questions asked and answered on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Tim Kappa. Tim is a Google product expert in the Google My Business uh, community. Uh, Tim is based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. And um, uh, Tim can be found at onlineownership.com. David Razam can be found at um, davidrazam.com. David is a leading internet marketer. He's uh, based in the uh, southern, the sunny south of the UK. And Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. He's based in London, in the suburb of Wimbledon. Um, he's a Google product expert in the uh, um, Google uh, AdSense community. Anyway. Right, we have 12 questions tonight. Uh, here's the, um, the, the first one. Um, it, uh, it's from Il Bikito. Uh, it's titled, Yay or Nay, Using My Location-Based Primary Keyword in the URL Slug. Um, and uh, is it uh, relevant and would, would it help? Um, but is this not a common practice. Um, I'm, I would be quite happy doing that. Um, I wouldn't expect any uh, any leverage in the SERPs from it or, or in local SEO because uh, uh, Google won't take too much notice of it. I won't take any notice of it. Um, but I, I like to have um, meaningful um, keyword slugs um it it looks good i think it helps people if they're trying to navigate the site um and gives them some idea of what they're looking for they they might even have uh, um have saved it and um want to look at something meaningful so yes do it do it because it looks good and it helps uh, those who use the site um but don't expect any uh any results from doing so. Okay, thank you, David. Um, let's move on to number two. Everybody's happy with that? I think so. Okay, this one's titled, another one from Elba Keto, how many secondary keywords should I pick? Uh, he's titled also uh, Keyword Questions 101. Um, one, how do I pick the right keyword to be the primary keyword? Two, how many secondary keywords should I pick? Um, three, how do I find latent semantic indexing? Um, four, how do you rank for near me keywords? And five, well, using keywords that mean the same thing but phrased differently be considered keyword stuffing. Okay, number one, here's going to be a shocker. You should know what your primary keyword is. Like, I'm guessing you, because you in the previous one, you were talking about location-based, so I'm guessing you provide some kind of service in a location. So let's say you're a locksmith in London. Your primary keyword is locksmith, right? That's what you are, right? And then for the next product, whether it be, um, what the hell do locksmiths do? Um, Break it uh, in. Break it in, but, but like uh, lock and replace, uh, new lock or, or replacement lock service. That's your primary keyword, right? Your secondary keywords are then, uh, for, uh, you know, variations of that that you would use it in normal language speech, right? Think on how you speak to a customer anyway, right? And, and, and the different variations that you talk about. Because you're not going to then do a secondary keyword being um uh like it could be 
um, you know, uh, lock replacement within 24 hours of call out could be your next like sort of H2. And then you say, look, obviously, you know, we can get the service within 24 hours as a premium service, whatever. But it, it has to be a natural language that that humans, because a human is freaking reading it, as well as a search engine, which, you know, uh, surprise, 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 can actually understand sort of speech patterns right the, it, it, do you know what i mean um lsi slap yourself no such freaking thing um near me keywords near me keywords uh you can't uh, essentially in that sense um uh, the way you kind of optimize for this is basically by google understanding where you are where your location is where your physical location is right um so that goes back to google my business that goes back to um your so your gmb location that goes back to your citations which then reinforces the fact that you are in this location that is your set location and then on your site you can provide things like um difficult without knowing what your, your your site does but um you could include things like um uh, going back to that 24-hour thing we could you could also for example break down things like um other locations uh nearby that and then in you know in, in like little things that that aren't on 24-hour service nearby are and then you could list two or three other locations slightly further away but not exactly um the the ideal way is if you had like near near me and, and it's really easy to to generate this and create it is if you had multiple locations so within multiple locations you have obviously location pages where you would then at the you know within your navigation it would be nearby cities or nearby uh, nearby um, areas, and then you would have a link to the individual things. Thereby, um, you know, the the search engine is is getting used to the fact that ah, uh, so this is that, this is near to that, that's near to that. It's essentially understanding your location. So, whether if you're just a single location, it's the basic things of having. Um, you know proper understanding of where you are so citations etc um no like keyword stuffing is the same thing as your secondary keywords like it's it's just using natural language on 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 what you do so you could have your first you could have your first primary keyword and then your secondary is essentially another another phrase that is is understood by the industry or used by humans you're not going to just thumb suck a secondary one out you know out of out of nowhere it's like um it, it's what is it is what is understood by humans that either use the primary or then they or they don't or they use the secondary the secondary or the primary it's like you do you see what i mean it's you can't just thumb suck these things out and no, you use natural language. If you're using natural language, you're not keyword stuffing because it reads well. Uh, you know, David ha will have some more on this because he's 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 the he's the writer man. Thank you, man. <laughs> yes, um, yeah. The, I, taking on from what Tim says you shouldn't you shouldn't use this sort of mechanistic um approach to uh writing content um yes do the research find out what people are looking for see what you're up against um but you still need to write something you need to write something that people will read and find useful and in doing so you're you'll cover the secondary keywords um if you're if you're writing a, a page on uh, replacing a lock um then you'll talk about um replacing a, a yale lock 
replacing a, you know, whatever other sort of locks there are. Um, and it will it will just fall into place. You, you need to look at what what you want to say, and what you need to say, what your what your customers are actually looking for. Um, so the secondary keywords will just will just happen. If you've got lots and lots of different sorts of locks, you'll have many secondary keywords. Um, if there are only about four of them, you'll have um, about four main secondary keywords. Um, but you might also have variations on um, keys for Yale locks, say, and you'd get into, I don't know, would you call them tertiary keywords? Um, yeah, you know, it's it's what happens. It, write your content, but write the content with an awareness of what's happening in search, uh, what people are looking for, um, and what and what uh, what the uh, competition is, uh, it might give you some idea of where the low hanging fruit is and where you should be going first. Um, but you know, it's 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 really about writing. It's about writing, not numbers. Um, and what else? Uh, was there anything else I wanted to say? Uh, um, well the right the right key right primary keyword is yes is is your major products or services um uh, normally um and as i say you can you can do your research around it you might find some way of uh of, of handling that content that will give you a better chance of, of ranking um you know i i see so many people who just write stuff and they say oh but it didn't it didn't rank well that's that's because your competitors have got three times as much content on their their pages than you have um length of of content isn't necessarily a, a ranking factor but if you if you're writing length and you're writing length well um you're adding to the quality of what what's on your page what's on your website so although they're not directly um di di directly connected um right right long and well long and in depth um and you'll do uh, you'll do well and i digress uh i go off at a, a tangent although not a complete tangent um what i'm saying is is that you need you need to have done your homework before you start writing but you need to write you don't just do the numbers i should shut up before i go on all evening well that's okay we've got we've got all night um all right let's uh, to, to number three on our run list this one um, okay uh, it's from alex corvin it's titled how would you do search engine optimization for custom made products it goes on to say uh, how would you do seo for custom made products there is a base product and many many variations and optional extras there are always some products in stock made ready uh, but the same problem as above base product with many additional attributes to make it even harder there are many products made in the past and can be used as design templates we're moving the site from captainseat.com uh, to captain seat um captainseat.co.uk i've been doing search engine optimization for a while but i've never had a job like this so I'd, I'd like to have um some input some opinions and some advice um he said thanks i think this is um i think this is a um a really potentially a really nice seo job um i don't think it, i don't think it's necessarily something you should worry about you're, you're you're looking at it saying oh there are 25 factorial um 
variations here. Um, but no, you, you think think about why there are uh, there are variations, why there are custom made products. There's a there's a problem with um, sorry, they're they're an answer to a problem. <laughs> they're not a problem. They're all an answer to a problem. So someone has got a, a pain. Um, oh, everyone stopped. Have I got a have I got a network problem? No, we can still hear you. Oh, okay. Um, I, everyone, everyone seemed to have stopped. Okay, I should carry on. Um, so th think about those solutions. Think about what what itch the the scratch and write some uh, write some case histories if you like. You know, this this pink fluffy elephant. I'm uh, sorry, this this elephant. Um, was a pink fluffy one because Mr. Jones wanted a pink fluffy elephant because um, it stopped his headaches or whatever it is. Um, so um, yeah, th think about think about pain. Think about the pain that these are uh, relieving for for people. That's uh, that's where my content be anyway. And I don't know why you're moving from .com to .co.uk, but you didn't ask about that. But it's implicit because you put it, uh, you put it within your content, within, within, within your question. Well, yeah. so the first thing uh, you're doing is like your product is actually still a product. I know you have many variations, but it is still a base product, which is a seat, right? so that is going to be your main thing then your next one is going to be the actual vehicles right so it's going to be seat and vehicles that will never change right and then it's entirely up to you on what you're going to be actually calling them your your your, your actual design or variations of them okay so that is entirely up to you because that is going to be your brand so if you think about it, Nike does trainers, right? It, it, it's a trainer. The end of yours is a seat. Then there's the brand. Feed up, Mercedes, whatever. Nike is Nike, okay? Then once you've got that product and the brand, then you make up your own shit. Like Nike will then make it, call it the super flangical freaking go faster x12 model and that is your entire thing up to you right what you then do is then you need to market that new product name or feature okay and the first thing you're going to start at and another one is start going to some festivals i mean like there are mega this year already you've got the Doncaster V Dub Fest, you've got the Retro Dub Fest in Suffolk, you've got the Bug Jam, you've got, there was one last weekend. You get out there and see what people want to call it, right? And 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 so it's a seat, they can search seats, they can find you. They can find you via seat and, and vehicle. They can find you, right? Slash cover, because essentially that's what you do, seat cover. Um, then the next thing is is your actual you, you know you are going to call that name what your name and that's where your marketing comes in because it, like any product it's not going to have a name until you start marketing it you decide that but it's essentially the seat that's seat mercedes mercedes and then it's the xr12 super edition go faster those are every single product with nike is different like nobody's going to know until it launches right but it's a shoe and a Nike, it's a seat and a vehicle. Doc, you need to start thinking like that, right? Um, and then you, it's the marketing of that new product you've created, right? So that will sit under whatever particular category that you've created for it. Like, is it a, is it the three, or I think you call it a rock and roll, whatever? But is it the three? Is it the, you know whatever? Is it the captain seat? whatever and then it'll fit under that and then you have your different variations of it which you will call your own product name right um and you know you can always expand on that by getting out there 
to all the festivals, man. You get out there, get out there with the product, get out there with the new idea. Is this practical? Is it going to work? How, you know, um, it, and, and, and ask people that do this day in, day out, because that is your market on how they would explain it. Because without you knowing what the, what the, what, what the, what the camper van uh, lifestyle people are going to call it because they are the your actual customers without you knowing how they describe it is like literally you're not knowing how to market that seriously get out there book every single festival up from now get out there with your new product and ask them about it and sit down around the campfire where after they've sung their freaking kumbaya at night then you 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 start talking product how they would describe it is it you know and it's because they are your customer and they come up with some weird words for weird shit so so you get out there and they are them but to answer your main thing it's a seat cover and then it's your vehicle makes and and, and that is your core then the rest is you want to you describe it how you want to describe it but i really recommend you get out to every festival this year and to start speaking to your actual core base when you created something new and how would they describe it and how would they find it useful or would they find it useful and in talking to them whether they've got good feedback or not the point is you're hearing their language and then that language will resonate into your copy on how you're going to put it onto the page and market it you well, went Tim yeah and um, just like to say that you can probably ignore what i said in favor of what uh, tim said i hadn't had a look at the website before i i gave it a general answer but um what tim says is absolutely bang on okay let's go forward to number four on our run list uh it's another one from el Bakito. he says how do i ensure that i come up on local searches um this is a local seo question um how do i ensure that i come up on local search if my business does not have a a, a google my business page since no physical product but it has decent authority in the business context say i'm running ads or different marketing campaigns for a limited location in country a my business has more traffic than some of my direct competitors however my um, uh, top uh, competitors cater to multinationals so will google perceive them differently from a local search point of view the reason for asking is that my page is doing fairly fairly well on the search engine result pages however for this local ser service it is not doing well compared to uh, the other competitors right so you so you're basically saying that you're not local you're a printed service but you want to rank better in local like mm. so so first off you're definitely not gonna you're definitely not gonna rank um <coughs> hyper local just forget that um yours because uh, if you're gonna you see you're gonna run into a bit of a problem with locations man because if you're doing an entire country <coughs> um you're like well uh, shit because so you're in australia so you're gonna you're gonna list off the or whatever you call them their provinces or whatever 
but then within that there could be another 20 cities and then obviously you've got all the individual municipalities you, 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 it's never really really going to happen because um and how are you going to make those different i mean you say your competitor already does it so what's he doing is he creating location pages based on this on on, on on the province within the province is he picking 10 of the 10 of the more, more lucrative cities like what's he doing and then within those cities is he adding you know like uh, and how's he differentiating them i mean if they're if if these are mass the same do you know what i mean um so probably province city i wouldn't go i wouldn't refine anything further down pick pick the more lucrative cities uh because you're going to run into a world of mess when you start having tens of thousands of location pages um but then within those cities I would probably put lead times uh like how are you going to make them how are you going to differentiate them make them slightly different i don't like honestly i don't know um potentially your lead time for for that area based on your current post because i'm assuming you pr like printing you're delivering it um uh, Yeah, it's a bit of a tough one because, you know, location. So firstly, for anything that for anything that's local, GMB win hands down like that literally takes up the entire full half of the search search result the, completely above the fold is literally your map and three pack, which you just won't compete in. Uh, then you've got a little opportunity with an ad, but you know if somebody's looking local they're looking local there's just there's no way around that so then you scroll down and to the first organic um or you know and and then you're into the organic realms um yeah that's that's the thing um uh, i mean what's your what's your competitor do has it covered like what cities because essentially it's up to you in terms of what cities you because at that point at that point you're just like literally well i can't compete in local without having a location page and now it's a question for you on how are you going to structure that and what are you going to target like i wouldn't go down the route of like everything point blank everything but i could but you could pick you know the top 10 cities in there or and then how are you going to make them slightly different from one another? Um, I suppose lead times in terms of postal. Um, uh, you are, you could also do pricing because I'm guessing your pricing is slightly different depending on the size of the print job. I mean, if it's like 5,000 flyers is only, is going to weigh, let's call it 500 grams being posted from your main location to x city is going to be let's say 10 bucks but if they're ordering ten thousand flyers which are going to weigh a kilo now your price is going to be 1250 right that could be a way of differentiating or making them slightly more useful location pages than just a boilerplate template which ultimately some will win in less competitive and in in competitive areas where you're also competing as local printing services um you still need to stand up you still need to be in position like one to five to even you know get a click um so yeah it's a little bit of a tricky one the main question is how many are you going to target and then how are you going to differentiate how are you going to make that unique that like google's going to want to show you in the organic over and above the local services and the other you know the other bit the, the other big multinationals that have you know like whatever the, you know that have been around so yeah a bit tricky cool all right 
So let's move on now to number five on our run run list. Um, and here is a, uh, it's a question. It's titled uh, uh, "They Have Ruined Our Income." He's referring, or she is referring to um, Google. Um, name is Donna B. Um, she's a cartoonist, and uh, her main uh, competitor is Cartoon Stock, a UK company which sells cartoons for a couple of dollars. They have ruined our income. I'm sorry, I thought that was, I thought that was about Google. I was absolutely wrong. Um, anyway, um, he, it goes on. Uh, I do a lot of food cartoons, and I saw that my website came up in uh, Google Search Console for the words uh, gastronomy cartoons as a search. First, you'd have to figure out how to spell it. Um, no one clicked. Um, he, he said, I've never used that word, but I guess people are looking for it. I get no traffic, maybe two clicks a day. But anyway, I try to use only one or two keywords in the post for search engine optimization. Um, so um, uh, Google doesn't think I'm low quality trash. But look at all the keywords cartoon stock uses. Why are stores like them not penalized, but I am for using lots of keywords? Please help. Yeah, so I had a look at this, right? And <laughs> you first need to understand the actual um, the actual nature behind the, the, the query. So look, someone searching for restaurant cartoons, right? Not restaurant cartoon, they're restaurant cartoons, okay? Which implies they want to use it or view multiples of it, okay? Um, which uh, Google's going to show them. And I know you say, oh, it's it's a crap thing. You know, they don't have anything on there. But the point is they've got multiples, cartoon stock. Anything with, you know, it's it's stock, it's stock stuff, which people can buy. Google's recognizing that search query and the intent behind what people are searching for. Um, so that's the, the, the first thing to answer you. Why are they showing this, which you assume is low quality, but it's perfectly serving it. When you search for hotel in XYZ, you're expecting to be shown multiple OTAs that have multiple hotels. You're not expecting the individual little guy, although you may want it. You've got to hit to page three and four for that because that's the intent behind it. And Google physically changed it to, to do that because it's the intent behind it. If you're searching for a specific thing, you will search for that specific thing, right? Equally, you know, as a cartoonist versus cartoons, it's also the intent behind it. It's totally different. So... Well, then I started looking at your, your your things, and you know, there's some basic things that, like, you know, you can you can like off the very quick off the top of your head is actually provide that intent. Like when I looked on your restaurant thing, the restaurant landing page, right? So the first off was like your categories you're using. You're using two different categories for a particular cartoon, um, and the one was restaurant, and I think the one was like, I don't know, it could have been psychology. I can't quite remember, but but when i clicked on to the actual cartoon it came up featured in the actual psychology thing so you need to be more uh, set with what it is and what primary category you're going to have that in okay so that's the first yeah. one secondly when i clicked it uh, and then obviously in the title of that actually thing was just restaurant cartoons right but for what like there's no intent behind it um consider adrian adding you know buy licensed cartoons because essentially what they're doing is they're licensing it, I think, whatever the, whatever the term is, you know. So put that in your title, put that on the page, right? Because equally, like, unlike cartoon stock, where you can physically buy the actual cartoon under a different license on the page, yours are like article page or, uh, I don't know, but they're product pages, but you can't physically do it on there. You've then got to go to the buy thing and then read on how to do it. So I think the understanding from a search engine's point of view is completely different to cartoon stock. It's like literally find the cartoon you want and check out. It's a product page, right? 
um, which I guess I think you are on WordPress, which you could do if you went to WooCommerce, for example, and you could put those those things into products like proper products have WooCommerce you can check out like whatever. So that would make more sense on that. Um, um, then then the next thing is, is, you know, like I was just looking at some of your stuff is, um, you know, buy, buy cartoons or license cartoons, for example, then um, on the actual cartoon page itself, it's literally the title that you called the cartoon. I get that. Uh, but in the actual title, it you should still have, you should maybe shorten it for the title of the actual page, the meta title, and then put, you know, by this cartoon or license it or whatever the industry uh, name is for that. Um, equally, your, 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 um, your, your site title changes from different pages and things like that. So your homepage is Donna, um, I can't so I can't remember your surname, but Donna something um, cartoonist or cartoons. And then on some pages, it was just D dot uh, your surname without like cartoons. You know, you need to have standardization for this, especially if you're going to grow it. Um, yeah. So look, there's, there's a lot of little things there. The first thing you shouldn't do is they've ruined our income. You need to understand like the nature of an intent behind it and then and then and then work through it like uh you know i work a lot with hotels but in 2018 when they changed the intent behind the search query and removed every single actual hotel from the from the search query hotel in xyz area uh and replaced it all with um with the with the, with the booking sites instead of normal sites i didn't say they ruined our income I looked at every other kind of potential avenue on how people want to buy it, what they want to look at, why they're visiting, you know, etc. So you need to understand the market and what people are buying, and then perhaps more, um, uh, more, more grouping of really specific stuff. Waiter spill soup. I don't know, you know, and then group waiter spilling soup on you know in, in, into in, by tags and then waiter spilling soup becomes an actual tag for those particular groupings um you you, you need to look more into that rather than hey oh i can't sell my restaurant cartoon because someone else is outranking me yeah so start looking at what the individual market is specifically looking for who's buying cartoons who's embedding cartoons um and and and, and, and like sort of what's the actual market on that and then start looking at how you can group it um but just by simply actually having buy uh buy a cartoon somewhere in your actual home page um and actually on your category pages restaurant cartoons you know buy forward slash license could be a could be a start for to to to, to understanding it Thank you, Tim. Yeah, um, I didn't hear everything Tim said because I got called away. But my my comment would be that how do I actually buy a cartoon? How do I actually find a cartoon that I want to buy here? Um, it's not. It's set up as a, a blog. Um, you're, you've got things about look a book, moving pictures, um, fun time drawing, George Carlson review. It's all good content, but it's not about what your main business is, what the main purpose of the site is. The, the site is confusing. And I suspect if it's confusing to me, it's confusing to, to Google as well. Um, so i think that you need you need to think about the person who's coming here to find a cartoonist because it's not even selling cartoons is it it's selling your your cartooning um service this is um this is a, a bespoke um order for a cartoon as far as i can tell um and if i've got that wrong then 
there's a problem because I didn't find out what was what the service was. Um, so yeah, I think um, I think you really do need to put your, yourself in the mind of someone who is going to give you some money for what you're selling. Um, and at the moment, it's not clear uh, what's being sold, and it's very difficult for me to see examples of your work. They're all embedded in um, in, in blog posts, um, and I would like to see. You know, I'd like to be able to do a search on food cartoons and get a nice page full of food cartoons. Um, and then I would like to know at the bottom of that page what I need to do to contact you to get my own food cartoon. Um, so you, you need you need a piece of e-commerce, not a blog. Thank you. Excellent, guys. Excellent. This one is from Maria Ivanova, um, and it's titled How to Rank a Filtered Page for Search Engine Optimization. For example, White Socks Query takes, to, it takes the, the user to a pre-filtered page of socks with the white color selected. How to do it? Thank you. And Maria, I see, is using Magento. It's an Adobe product. Well, uh, I, uh, I know nothing about Magento, but the first thing you've got to do is make sure that <laughs> <laughs> uh that um uh that page isn't canonicalized <laughs> uh i think I, I can't quite remember if search query urls are i don't think they're automatically well in my when when i did work on a magenta site like 10 years ago i don't think that automatically canonicalized um well first thing is you've got to double check it uh, are they canonicalized or not um here's a novel a novel thing how about a tag rather than actually because look the thing is if you go down that road of removing that canonical every single potential uh filter query is going to be indexable which is not kind of ideal like you know what i mean someone's someone queries white sock gray you're going to have white sock gray you you just see what i mean it, like when those things are, are being indexed or not canonicalized um, from the original query from the original to the original page, it can become messy. And depending on how big the site is, it can become very messy, very very fast. Uh, here's a novel one. But why not a tag? If it's a white sock, it's a white sock tag. That tag can be indexed and ranked as an ecom page for white sock. thought but i haven't worked in magento in 10 years so i have no idea no I, i'm struggling as well for the same reason i probably haven't been to magento for longer than that um but the problem is yes you've got an infinite number of pages haven't you um and you've got uh, potential search budget um, problems if all of those are indexable and indexed um no yeah I, it's, it's it's infinite it can become infinite yeah, yeah. so i i'm not sure i i don't know about this i feel i should do but i don't yeah i mean i haven't really worked with uh, i mean i do a couple of e-com sites but 
but not that we, you know, um, have multiple variations of different colors. So I, I, I haven't had to do it. But when I did uh, with a magenta site on a fashion uh, label a couple of years ago, um, I don't know if it's changed, but best practice was to canonicalize them back to the originating page. So if it started on a, you know, if it started on socks and then people started filtering for white, uh by length by size every single one of those is added to the filter query right every single one of those potentially but it originally started on the sock page and therefore it gets canonicalized back to that the main thing being sock and that's how you know dealing with the, the, the those those parameter queries right um so i don't think your best thing is actually the filter page because that can get mucky way quickly because like you're talking about white sock, but then it's size, that's a parameter onto that same filter. Um, the length, high length, pop tops, ankle sock, right? That's another potential one onto that. Um, do you see what I mean? And God forbid there's a brand that's gonna be added in there also. Like, I don't know what your, you know, you've literally got filters running down the side of, of, of that kind of e -com platform. Every single one of them is a potential. But I would say explore the po possibility of using a tag. Tags can quite easily rank very well. Plus, yeah. plus you can literally add every single white sock in that tag on that landing page. And then they could just search white sock. Let's look at it from an SEO point of view here. How are you going to rank for white socks? Um, are you not just wanting to to rank for everything on the on the site? Um, and how would you go about it? You're going to need some content. Um, you know, are you just going to have the, the same old, the, the same old e-commerce page uh, with a few bits and pieces about that sock, and it just happens to be white? If you've got a real reason for wanting to rank for white socks, then create some content about white socks uh, and make sure it's better than other people's for white socks. But I have a feeling that white socks is going to be a uh, a pig. Now, you know, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm confused why you'd want to rank for white socks. You know, may, maybe it's uh, Nike white socks, in which case you're going to be up against everyone again. I'm just trying to think through this as I'm talking. Um, yeah, I, I think you're unrealistic to think that you're going to be able to rank for everything unless you're going to have, unless you're going to be able to create a lot of good content. I think you really need to be to be a, to be realistic about why people want to see, want to buy, want to find your white socks without actually having a look at them. Um, I think you know you've got to think about your brand and why they should come to your site to to buy white socks um yeah i think i could go off for the next two hours trying to kick this one about um but yeah i think that um you know it, it's 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 Definitely, part, part of it is about the e-commerce uh, platform and the mechanics of this. You know, can you get um, can you can you get customized content onto the White Sox page to make the White Sox page unique? And that's you know that's aside from any what does the URL uh, look like? Has it got fifteen dozen um, um, variables in it, uh, which potentially Google won't like. Um, the canonical problem, uh, this this is, um, 
this is difficult and I keep coming up against my complete lack of knowledge of um, of Magento these days. Yeah, and, and one thing worth investigating here is the customer journey. So how are they arriving to your site? So for instance, are they actually looking for white socks or were they looking for socks generally and then looking for different colors and then decided to buy white pair of socks? You know, in which case you want to rank for socks rather than for white socks. Um, <clears throat> what is the internal journey? So which filters are people using? So are they using color? Are they using the brand? Are they using the size to narrow down the searches? And how much revenue are these different queries generating? Those are the kind of data that you have and no one else has. And that's where you can see the opportunities as well as where you're doing well at the moment. So I think instead of thinking, I want to rank for this, think more holistically and strategize from there. Yeah, another thing, I just searched white socks. The only one, and like out of out of the six I looked at, position one to six, Amazon was one. I don't know. They've they've got an S some kind of skew parameter query freaking thing indexed. Um, but then when you mess around it and it goes to a 404. So I'm guessing it's not actually the parameter query that's it's like a proper like category page rather than because if i'm change anything in it it actually defaults going did you mean or did you say so i think that's more into it like i don't think it's actually like a magenta prompt degree and they they're freaking geniuses there they're always you know they've got people way beyond you know our pay grades figuring this shit out but interestingly every single other one that i looked at wasn't a parameter query it was a physical product category page depending on the gender as in a white sock like full-on it wasn't a parameter query it wasn't a filter it was literally a category white socks and then separated you could either do men or women gender right so that's our question like based on my first thing the top 10 like they're all positioning which you want to be positioning well only one and like i wouldn't even say amazon is you i don't know what the hell they're doing but the other nine it's all actual physical product category page so you know the other nine can't really be too wrong can they I say um I'm, i should stay away more often um we've had some fantastic discussion tonight Okay, let's move on to the next on our run list. Number seven uh, from Samir Narasi. Um, Samir has a question titled, Some points that I should focus on to rank uh, an e commerce store. Um, Yeah, Samia said, uh, guys, please, what, what are some points I should focus on to rank an e-commerce store? Um, I, I think um, uh, Samia should uh, answer, uh, or should, should ask, I should say, or should should seek out the, the questions previous, prior to this one. Um, and... Uh, uh, all of it's applicable to um, your question here. Um, the first, the first, the first thing I'm going to say to you with an e-commerce store, Samir. I don't know if this is yours or you've taken on a job. The first, first thing about an e-commerce store is sell a decent product. Like, literally, it, the product is going to sell itself. Do you know what I mean? Once you've got the marketing down and you're getting it in there, like a shit product just won't sell yeah 
you know, people will go and buy freaking fake reviews and you see it all the time. And like the governments are cracking down on this because, you know, literally people have, you know, and you know, shipping out these things and then they get like a little review on it for free. And like, you know, countries are cracking down on this because yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's, it's fake and it's, and it's abusing the consumer's trust. Um, so the end of the point being is the reason they do that is because they've got a shit product. Like, so I don't know what, which, which camp you're in. Are you just trying to do this? Are you affiliate marketing it? Uh, is it your actual product or are you just working for that product? Like that's the first off. Okay. So, it, and I understand that's something that if you were taking this on is something beyond your control. Um, it, you know, it's work, uh, it's a shit product and you're going to have a bit of a problem there. All right. The first, the, the next thing I really want to look at is when Adam said high quality links, find blockers in niche. And like, like, I'm sorry, mate, just, just, just load of shit. Um, I'm sorry, Adam, don't know who you are, mate, but yeah, I'm going to tell you a story some here and I'll keep it succinct for you. I won't, I won't try and bore everyone. Right. Um, when everything shut down during COVID, I've got a client who does hire, right? Of course, uh, they're one of the largest hire companies in the country, but all of a sudden you couldn't hire jack shit, right? So how do you pay rent? How do you pay staff? How do you renew your contract on a, uh, a, a um, 50,000 square meter? Uh, warehouse uh, you've got to start selling it because yeah, you, you you couldn't hire it you, well, nobody was hiring anything no events everything cancelled you had to sell it right so the next problem home and garden furniture is like probably one of the most competitive niches out there I think we can all say every Tom Dick and Harry wants to sell something so the first thing, and this is this is going to be for you, and this is where you need to start looking at. The first thing is, I, I knew there's no way we're going to rank uh, quickly uh, in any way, shape, or form on a new site uh, relating to uh, the actual specific kind of product. So uh, in their case, it was, let's say, um, uh, garden furniture. There's, there's just no way. Not overnight. They forget it like you've got to be realistic here so the thing that you then look at is okay so how do i break down this garden furniture how can i piece it down because the big guys tend to just go for things like um four piece wooden garden furniture or four piece aluminium or two piece um cast you know balcony you, you just see what i mean they stick to the very small stuff because they're at scale and they don't have that kind of where they can break it down. So what I'm saying to you is start looking at the actual product and how can I break this down into a slightly better niche that is not as competitive because so it's the same product, but the bigger guys haven't actually broken that down properly. Then it comes down to content, man. It definitely your content. So, so once you've broken it down and you understand that now all of a sudden what's the metal okay so it's an aluminium can i then who can use it ah let's call it bistro because bistro encompasses smaller restaurants and cafes right and what is it it's a furniture set or table and chairs so so instead of four piece cafe set or four piece outdoor dining set it now became you know four piece aluminium bistro set which nobody was looking at but there was decent traffic but none of these guys were really playing with it so then you look at content around aluminium you look around content on different sets two piece three you mix and match match it up you look at video content you look at uh cleaning guides maintenance guides uh, shipping guides, like literally every kind of thing around that. And within six months, within six months, it's, and it's still now, even though everybody's come back and everybody's selling aluminium bistro tables and chairs, they are positioned now. Right. So what I'm saying is, is 
yes but they still wouldn't like for example if it was a bistro table or bistro chairs yes that still needs to be worked on but think of the it is a product but try and look at it in a slightly different vertical than the big guys are just chucking it in and then you can work through different areas of that and then by looking at those in diff in a different way you can actually you can actually have quicker wins faster whilst you're working on the the slow and steady slog to cafe furniture or restaurant furniture or garden furniture because that's the end goal but that's where all the big boys play you want to find that middle thing where you can get in there and actually make a few sales whilst you're slowly working on it so that is my best suggestion to you oh yeah. and for adam's thing i never built one fucking link <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The uh, the the problem, as as Tim has alluded to, maybe he's actually said explicitly, is you know what is it that your e-commerce store is going to be selling? Um, you know, if you're selling something that the the big the big guys have filled up the first five pages of Google with you ain't gonna get in there that you really need to think niche so please i hope that your your e-commerce store is going to be selling something that has got a chance in the marketplace um because otherwise you've got much more of a slog than i would like to take on um so i think that before you you start ranking or even building an e-commerce store if if this is your business rather than a, a client you've taken on uh, you need to have a good look at the marketplace and how you're likely to to be able to sell in it you know just just look at the competition just think about some searches for the thing that you're selling or the things that you're selling um because i still see it now i get people coming to me small businesses coming to me saying you know we've got we've got these things we want to sell it and you look at it and you say or i look at it and i think what's special about this what can make this a search that people would be looking for um you know how will people find it um and it's a it's a big question and it's also can they get it better from amazon can they get it cheaper can they get it to their door the same day how can you do that so really have a look at your business dispassionately to see whether it has a realistic chance out there because it's brutal absolutely brutal and you need to make those brutal questions right now sorry I'm, my, my microphone was muted i didn't notice good one david good one tim excellent all right let's um move on to number eight on our run list it's titled there are several urls that google is just refusing to index that's from akash raj uh, he goes on to say hi can anyone please help me that there are several urls that google is refusing to index there's no trend or reason I can spot why Google only refuses to index certain URLs. Some are indexing just fine, but some are flat out. Um, they, they flat out haven't started indexing at all. All such pages are relevant search engine optimization, optimized pages um, that have been added to the sitemap, but Google will just refuse to index no matter what I do. 
Um, search console coverage report shows uh, uh, some of these URLs are listed as discovered, currently not indexed, and some as crawled, currently uh, not indexed. I've tried adding more content, changing on page, submitting for re-indexing, and even adding internal, link, internal links to the pages that are not getting indexed. But no matter what I do, I can't get the pages indexed, let alone bring in organic pages. I'm at my wit's end, so I really could do with some advice. So Google's been... Um... I love the fact that everyone goes, all oh, this is all about quality. Yes, it is. It is kind of about the quality and are they slightly relevant and are they different and things like this. I personally think Google is just so shit up in terms of um, server space out there um, and they just literally can't keep up. Uh, I mean, they're constantly building. Like, and, and when I'm talking, you know, these servers that are like, they like five football pitches in size like they they literally can't keep up all this stuff's going to be stored in index somewhere we could, it's not just some magical shit, you know what i mean anyway yes there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff so there have to be more um there have to be a lot more um picky about what they just indexing they're not just you know willy-nilly um crawling and indexing everything um, they will get to it. They 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 will. Uh, it's just nothing happens fast anymore, especially with the newer site. And, and when I say new, like you know, one to two years, um, they will get to it. Um, yeah, internal linking fine, but like don't don't sweat it. A, a little interesting one that, um, and this could be totally completely different um is also just have a quick look at your url i mean i'm not saying don't i'm just saying occasionally you you'll put a word in there which actually doesn't make sense like because just the way you wrote it and then how it hyphened it into the url um and which may lead to google going no i don't need to this like that kind of we that word doesn't match anything and that's going to be like a later priority and i'll give you a read like i've got a, a medical site um big traffic you can chuck something up it's indexed and live uh, it's done even today within like a week um but there was a new product that they were doing and it's not a new product it's a, it's an injection except the name of this uh when it was done it didn't make sense because it was all grouped together and actually even the way you pronounce it it's two words but for some reason when it had gone live and i never spotted it it was all grouped together right when, when you look at it it's like okay yeah that that's the product or that's the name of the injection not a problem um and and yeah it went on for like two months and i'm like what and everything else is getting indexed no problem and this could just be completely anecdotal but I popped the actual proper thing, the hyphen in there the other day because I looked at it and went, oh, that's a bit wrong. It hasn't been in this. Yeah, I might as well fix that. Um, and lo and behold, within like 12 hours, it's in text. So anecdotally, there's two things. Yes, you know, Google is picky now. It will eventually be found, but they are super picky now. People go quality. I'm going, yeah, it's just it's just a matter of service space like they just can't keep up with us um that's my personal thing by the way um the second thing is we'll get to it it's going to take time the other thing is do all the right things uh by interlinking you know properly interlinking referencing different things and of course yes make sure it's something worth you know like half decent right um just remember that just because it's indexed you can still be marketing that stuff people can still be finding and reading it because you should as a marketer should be marketing your stuff to people anyway you don't it doesn't need to be in there people can still visit the url correct right and read it and find it and share it or whatever so so just remember just because it's not indexed uh, it, it can still be marketed 
you're a marketer, right? Um, so, you know, who it was intended for, get it out to the audience anyway, right? Um, and then, yeah, so, and then the other little anecdotal thing there was just double check that there's not some weird thing in the URL that makes no sense, which makes Google go, yeah, we're going to put that on the back burner. We found it. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to index it yet because we kind of don't, don't know what it is. And forget that can go back to the six month timeline back burner. Um, so, yeah, there's a few things there. Thank you, Tim. Excellent. All right, let's go to number nine on our run list. Should I make multiple blog posts on a particular item? It's from Andrew Mazer. Um, Andrew said, my company sells items in bulk by the case. Uh, we are a wholesaler. We rank pretty well when we use, when we use words like wholesale, um, preceded by the uh, name of an item. Uh, it's not unusual to rank highly uh, using the word cheap also. And there are other terms like for sale, on sale, lowest price, best price that people use in this search. Uh, it would be ridiculous to use too many of these words and phrases in a single product description, page or blog post. What is your advice? Um, should we make multiple blog posts on a particular item or group of items? Um, in order uh, to incorporate more of the various terms people use, or does that get too spammy? Uh, okay, so I uh, personally, I wouldn't go too overboard. Um, okay, so what I have done that have worked what, what, that has worked pretty well. Of course, the actual product on on page. Um, there is a bulk discount section on it um, where, and it's, you know, properly t marked up on page of the product and it's the uh, bulk discount, you know, by um, one to five, it's the normal price, five to 10, it's a percentage, uh, you're showing that and then, and that properly, properly marked up gets displayed and is understood because it's a bulk. So it's a chair. Uh, if you buy that in bulk, it's this price. If you buy that in, in X between one and one, it's this. So that's totally understood. And like you say, it's already ranking. Where there is an opportunity is to start looking at things which are, uh, in terms of a blog, is to actually look at something where you don't, exactly have a category for it's it you have got the products it's not exactly a category so for example all of a sudden you're stocking something and you realize well hang on a second i've got a lot of red um two seaters two seater couches here but you don't actually like yes you rank for red two seaters but you're not really doing anything in bulk or you haven't got anything there. So there could be a blog where new in, new um, red two seaters uh, available with bulk, bulk buy, bulk discount or whatever, wherever you are, I think you call it wholesale, available with wholesale prices, right? And there you actually take in all your red items. So they're not necessarily in one, because they could be across multiple categories, which ordinarily wouldn't. And you can actually create a nice whole thing just around the red and the whole range. So two seaters and blah, 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 whatever. Yeah. Because you don't have anything on that. You don't have a category on that. You don't have a thing. They're all across multiple things. So they don't actually fit into one. But you have red. It's like, well, you know, like if somebody's searching for red, hey, shit, we've got loads of red. And it's a bulk wholesale. So yeah, I would say don't go overboard with it because then it just gets silly um, and it gets messy. And then you start, you may inadvertently end up cannibalizing something. It may not even be thing, but if you structure it nicely and you think about it, um, you can actually get, they're not high 
traffic volumes, but you can target someone who's specifically thinking about that niche little bit. Yeah, I would just add that it's best to avoid using expressions such as cheapest and best price, because if the customer finds the same thing cheaper elsewhere, you are in big trouble. I'm also suspicious about whether it is actually um, possible to rank easily for things like lowest price, best price. Um, I suspect that there are lots of sites already that are using it. And you're perhaps seeing that there are good searches, good search numbers on these, but whether they're actually um, whether it's actually possible to to rank for them in any particular time scale, in other words, in a short time scale, without lots of work, um, I'm feeling a bit dubious about that. Yeah, and like I'd never want to go down that road. Like, you know, we all know what happened to John Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you start saying it's the cheapest, it's the lowest, it's the best, like, yeah, you know, use that somewhere or at least use other language that is going to say that we do our best to provide the product at our best possible price. But, you know, whacking stuff over there, cheapest, best, but like, yeah. Uh, okay. Yep. Um, I clicked this too quickly. Um, um, it's uh, from Rihanna and uh, Harvest. Shame on you. Ah, oh, well. Um, Rihanna said, do images that link to your website uh, count as backlinks? Well, I think it's no, isn't it? Uh, anyway. Um, he's I recently got my website mentioned on a list of websites. Uh, that, that web, the website that featured us sent us a badge to put on our website. They obviously asked us to link the image of the badge um, to their website. Um, does that count as a backlink from us to them? Yes. Sorry if it's a, a dumb question, but this is the name of the group hmm. sorry yeah, that's a dumb question well it wasn't our group that sent a bad sound i can guarantee that <laughs> no i think if you scroll down a bit um michael martinez answered this question and i really don't have much to add <laughs> yes uh, it is an old old uh, strategy yeah it's an old strategy that google rumbled years ago yeah i did michael martin is he is a trojan like a champion isn't he? he never stops um and the the, the quality that he turns out it's, it's just amazing Anyway, there we are, off to number 11 on our run list. Um, Mike Van Vanacoro said, any suggestions on how to properly optimise blogs? I run an e-com business. We have a team of writers focusing on niche topics with less than a 10 keyword difficulty. We are currently using Shopify. Um, the issue is that we're not ranking for most of our blogs. Um, any tips or suggestions on how to improve? Um, it's how how good are your blogs? I think is the question. Uh, are they the standard three hundred or five hundred words that a um, that a writer that gets paid a few cents for it? turns out are they that sort of um blog posts 
in which case they're likely not to rank for very much or many of them are not um or few of them are likely to rank is what i'm trying to say in english um you need to be writing good stuff better than the the other guys um so that would be my major suggestion um i can't actually see what what these are like um i don't think we have a um the URL anywhere here. Um, so it also depends on um, your 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 niche and so on. But basically, you know, are you really writing good blogs? Are they better than the than what's ranking? Um, if they are better than what's ranking, really better than what's ranking, you'll have to look elsewhere. But um, most questions i i see and most questions i get like this um are really the the uh um the blogs aren't competitive um if they're not competitive they won't rank um i can't be any more specific because the the question isn't thank you david Okay, I think we've got at least one more bulletin again. Um, let's um, have a look at it. Chris Hannon asked the question. It's titled, Can a site redesign negative, uh, uh, negatively impact a company's search engine result pages? Absolutely. Um, he said, if so, what steps can be taken to avoid um, the negative impact? Well, I think you, it depends what you mean by redesign. Redesign can mean lots of different things to lots of different people. For me, redesign means making it look different. Some would say redesign means moving it, moving platform and changing all the URLs. So if your URL um, structure is going to change, if uh, pages are going to be on different, if the same pages are going to be on different URLs after the redesign, then you've got to go all through the uh, all through the process of making sure that you've got redirects in place and all that malarkey, which I'm not going to go into now because it's probably well, it may not be relevant to this. Um, so, um, if it's just a if it's just an appearance, just a theme change. Um, Yes, it can. If if you go down the, we've got a nice lightweight, fast website too. We're going to stick loads and loads of huge, beautiful um, images and some great, uh, great videos on it because that looks good. Um, you're going to upset Google, probably. Uh, you're going to find that you're, you you could find that the uh the site is is much slower um google won't like that um you um you may find usability issues um which google may or may not um um novel you via core web, core web vitals um but yes you you can mess up a site if you don't get your redesign right you know are you testing it? Are you making sure that this is not going to mess up SEO uh, SEO issues before it goes live? Are you going to measure the speed speed of these on the same uh, on the same server or a similar server? Um, you know, just just making it look different because you're bored with the way your website looks can cause you problems um if you do it properly um you may still find a bit of impact but it shouldn't uh, it shouldn't stay there it shouldn't be a problem that that remains with you um but even if you get it all right it can sometimes you, you can sometimes upset google you can sometimes find things going backwards for a while 
but you know you gotta you gotta be very careful with a, des a redesign um if you just do it uh, if you do it without a view of what's it potentially going to do to your seo um your technical seo um you know you can you can cause problems you can find problems thank you okay well it's that time again thank you for watching time um we'll be back at the same time uh, next week um to do this uh, uh, again um we um uh, before we go though i, m I must thank uh, people uh, on our website like uh, um Michael Martinez, um, Brenda Malone, um, um, oh, there's just so many people, especially you guys, um, uh, uh, Tim and uh, David and Masataki, uh, turn up every week. Um, it's just amazing, you know. I think thank you all very, very much. Anyway, we'll be, as I said, we'll be back and um, I found the right button to click, I think.